falls under fair use as it's a parody. If you don't have a sense of humor, go fuck yourself. Welcome. Is this my reality? Is this your reality? Disclaimer, in order to make this video, we have to ignore a few things, like the fact we didn't really go to the moon. Well, if you think we did, or even if you think we didn't, check out this story. What is helium-3? In an interview with the BBC in 2013, top Chinese scientist Ouyang Ziyuan estimated the moon's helium-3 resources could solve humans' energy demand for around 10,000 years at least. Helium-3, sparking lunar gold fever. In 1986, scientists at the Institute of Fusion Technology at the University of Wisconsin estimated that the lunar soil, called the regolith, contains 1 million tons of helium-3, a material that could be used as fuel to produce energy by nuclear fusion. According to the study, mining it would be a profitable undertaking. The energy produced by the helium-3 would be 250 times greater than that needed to extract the resource from the moon and transport it back to Earth, where the lunar reserves of helium-3 could supply human needs for centuries. The analysis of the researchers, based on samples collected by the Apollo missions, <coughs> triggered a fever for this new lunar gold, which would be worth billions of dollars for those who controlled it. I'm, I'm thinking trillions. However, it's 30 years later, and not a single gram has been collected. The moon has attracted global attention due to the presence of rich natural resources on its surface and the core. Scientists believe the moon is full of resources like rare earth elements, titanium and uranium, but the most important is helium-3. The nuclear fusion of light atoms, such as hydrogen isotopes deuterium and tritium, has been seen for decades as the energy source of the future. It's inexhaustible, much less polluting than the fission of the heavy atoms such as uranium. However, the technology developed needed for it to be practical and energy efficient it doesn't exist yet. And it's not entirely clean energy. The fusion of deuterium and tritium produces neutrons, particles that cause radioactive contamination and that cannot be contained with electromagnetic fields since they lack an electrical charge. That's the problem there. The solution they're saying is helium-3. Looking at the potential of helium-3, experts believe that if put to use, 5,000 tons of coal could be replaced by just 40 grams of helium-3. And just 8 tons of helium-3 in fusion reactors would provide the equivalent energy of 1 billion tons of coal, dramatically reducing transportation costs and protecting the environment. Helium-3 a non-radioactive isotope of the gas offers remarkable advantages. Its fusion with deuterium is much more efficient than deuterium tritium and does not release neutrons but instead protons which can easily be contained thanks to their positive charge. In addition, it is possible to capture its energy and produce electricity directly without the need for a water heating process to move turbines as in the current nuclear fission plants. This is free energy, basically. What would this be worth? Whoever controls this resource may control the energy supply of the whole planet. The helium-3 isotope is extremely rare on Earth, but exists in abundance on the Moon. According to NASA, of course you can always believe, China is preparing to mount the next phase of its lunar exploration program that will lead to a research base at the South Pole of the Moon. The Chinese Chang'e 5 mission has returned a new mineral from the lunar surface. The Chinese claim that this new mineral contains helium-3, an isotope that many scientists have touted as a potential fuel for future fusion reactors.
there are many reasons to return to the moon. That's if you believe we went there. Science, commerce, bragging rights, it all translates into soft political power. However, China's return of helium-3 had suggested that the moon could become the Persian Gulf of the mid to late 21st century. Clean and abundant fusion energy, it would change the world in ways that we can barely begin to evaluate. The element is believed to be a critical component in developing controlled thermonuclear fusion power. A difficult process, but according to scientists, not impossible. Of course, the problem remains of getting the technology of helium-3 fusion working. Helium-3 fusion may not become a reality before the middle of the century because of the technical obstacles involved. Some changes in American space and energy policy might hasten the advent of helium-3 fusion, however. And it's ridiculous, okay? Energy policy, you know, if they stop banning shit, or cut it out with that. The United States should start testing mining operations on the moon's surface, particularly extracting helium-3 from the lunar soil. The helium-3 could be transported to Earth and provided to research laboratories so that they continue the research and the development of what may be a solution to the world's energy needs. Building and updating their space capabilities at twice the rate we are means that very soon, if we don't start accelerating our development and delivery capabilities, they will exceed it. They will exceed us, and 2030 is not an unreasonable. The country, the country that controls this source of energy, the one that keeps the technological civilization running, will control the Earth. If China, if China becomes that country, considering its human rights record, its imperial foreign policy, let's face it, China sucks, okay? History is going to take a really dark turn. Therefore, the United States and the country that have signed the Artemis Accords must acquire control of the lunar helium-3 first and develop the technology used as its source for fusion energy. It's just like a good movie. America vs. China, They're going after the MacGuffin. They're going after the Helium-3 to see who can have free energy for the whole world. Number one, they're not giving us free energy. They're never going to give a shit for free. Number two, I don't even think men went to the moon. But that's a whole nother video. What do you guys think? Do you believe in Helium-3? Or is it just some other thing they're talking about that we're not going to know in 10 years? Leave a comment down below. Let's get the fuck out of here.